and my hearties, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. I am Captain Fireball, and today's game we'll take a look at Bones of the Caribbean. Two to five players are going to be playing on their boards to achieve great victory and gather as much gold and plunder as possible. All while watching out for other hardy, evil, evil pirates that are not going to help them. You'll be traveling to the sea and other docks to steal and plunder and pillage, and if you can manage to gain the most galleons and the most treasure at the end of the game, you're going to be the winner. It's a dice rolling game with luck and chance and grit and strategy. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the board and what comes included with Bones of the Caribbean. So here we have Dice of the Caribbean and everything that's going to be included in the game. As you can see, I set it up for three players and everything's about ready to go. But let's talk about the components first. As you can see, you're going to have a crew section over here and your wanted and or fame level over here. These are for points at the end of the game and these are for the amount of people you've got at your island protecting your buried treasure. Throughout the game, you're going to be using these markers here to gather a crew. You're also going to start with a D6 Fate Plunder Token as well as a random one allocated to each player. Simply take these, put them face down as though you're hiding them in your little plundered area over here as well as making sure you have five dice with one boat for each of the uh, for each player and of course start with a three in each of the boats for three representing a three crew in each boat you can gather more boats as you progress throughout the game so have these dice sitting next to you each player is also going to give you a special ability or I should say pirate captain you're then also going to take the C marker and put it somewhere in the middle of the table along with all the rest of the galleons which of course have secret buried treasure treasure under them and place them face down across the board hidden so that nobody knows what, where anything is. So start with somebody as the first player or the first captain and all the rest of the player pieces that you will not be utilizing set aside off of the board. You're also going to be utilizing these six die here that are all very unique and affect the game in a different way as you're rolling them. It has a Yahtzee style which you'll be rolling these dice here and of course this here die as well. All right that is the basics of all you're getting in the game including of course the rule book and the box here. Let's go ahead and talk about how a turn of play works and what you're doing in the game dice of the caribbean all right so you've seen the setup of the game and how it looks and everything included in it now let's talk about the player reference as well as a turn in the game you're just going to be basically getting six die on your turn you'll be rolling them yahtzee style the game is different than other games that you've seen like this like elements and king of tokyo and and those ty type of games uh, dice throne because what you're going to be doing is as you roll the die you're going to determine uh, based on the results where you place them on your board and each board has its own unique locations of course every board has the area for either your galleons, which is where you start here, a plunder area, buried treasure area, and then the hold area in the middle. This is the locked die section at the bottom. Here is exhausted die as well as skulls. When you roll a skull in your turn, you're simply going to take the first one you roll and put it on that area. That will count as your roll for that turn, and you can simply roll again. Another way to roll again is if you play a, a, a die or hold a die, so putting it in your locked area or in your held area. Uh, even if you don't roll a skull, you still need to do that in order to re-roll again. You can roll up to five times, but you can, you can use up to five of these dice to hold, to uh, exhaust, or to simply put into your locked area as an action. You're going to be trying to gather specific combinations of die based on your chart here. You've got the captain's hat, which is going to let you plunder. You can do up to one or two of the hats together. Storm is going to inflict damage to your opponents. Cannons will you initiate combat. Shoveling allows you to bury treasure as well as stealing buried treasure. You've got your skulls, which if you can get three of them, which you don't want to get, you place a black mark on your opponent, and it also affects you in a negative way. You can actually increase that size as well if you have four and five skulls by increasing the number of players who get black spots. You've got your swords, which allow you to recruit units, one or three of them, and you can recruit on your island, or you can recruit on your boat by simply moving the die from three to four to five to six. Uh, you'll also be able to use um, your black, uh, the, sorry, the, yeah, the swords, where you can choose another captain. All of that captain's raiders in one space lose half a crew if taking part in a combat, so it can be very, very deadly. Like I said, the last thing is, of course, the skulls which you don't want to get. But after you've re-rolled your die as many times as you possibly can, you have a bonus turn. The bonus turn is you're able to re-roll any of the locked die and utilize those die along with any die that are still held to create more actions from the end of the game there. Whatever you roll is what you get though, and if you get those black skulls there and you get three of them, you're going to suffer some nastiness that you don't want to suffer. You'll be moving around the board trying to collect as much plunder as you can or galleons that will turn into buried treasure. Your opponents will be attacking you, increasing their crew, protecting their islands so that you're buried treasure will be safe along with trying to utilize the 
the best combat of nature you possibly can because sometimes you want to just send a boat against a boat or you can send a fleet against an island it'll be kind of up to you it has a dice combat feel to it though you're gonna be going around until all the galleons from the board have been taken and placed either in the galleon area or in the buried treasure area and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner you're gonna score points from crew member uh, crew reputation you're gonna sc score points from buried treasure the exact total and then you're gonna score a couple points for each of the different galleons you have in your galleon area as you score different things too or pick them up on your next turn if you still have them on your boat it'll transfer so it has some unique aspects to it in that way i'm going to show you a couple turns of the game dice of the caribbean and then we'll go ahead and talk about what i think about it so now we're back to Dice of the Caribbean, and as you can see, I went ahead and set it up for three players, although you can play up to five players. I've set all the extra stuff over here, though. Every player is going to have their own unique player reference card, which you'll be able to utilize and see all the different actions you can take place with. You've got your crew members for your island. You've got your fame trackers. You've got your hidden bonus um, tile here, which is going to give you a certain amount of money or plunder. And then, of course, you've got your D6 fate, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So uh, you're going to start off by picking a player to start with, which will be red over here, and he's going to simply roll his die. We're going to roll the die like this and then you're going to select it, one of these skulls if you roll a skull and put it in the skull or exhausted area at any point you can exhaust die to move and moving is pretty simple to spend a die you can move to a location like the sea or you can move to a location like another player's base you can do that so that you can fight them take their loot or um or uh, steal their uh, the treasure buried down there. Uh, you're also gonna have all of these guys here you can utilize or even save them if you'd like. You cannot save something if you're actually able to use it. So if you have two cannons and the max you need is two cannons to do something with, you don't get to hold them. Um, but a cannon, so if I here, I can initiate a combat if I want with that. Maybe I don't want to initiate to begin with. I prefer the captain's hat. So the first thing I'm probably gonna do is exhaust maybe the swords here to allow me to move out to the sea. I can then use a captain's hat. Uh, where I put it in here in the locked eye area and that will allow me to gather a plunder or a galleon and you just put it underneath your boat here because then in the beginning of your next turn this will go back to your base you can also choose to move this to your base sooner and drop it off if you'd like um, if I don't want any more of these extra things here because I played a, a die in the locked area I am then able to re-roll these guys here and I went ahead and did so. I got cannons. Ooh, I don't like any of this stuff here. I've got the shovel, and over here it tells you, use the shovel to turn plunder into treasure or to dig up buried treasure. Uh, and with two of them, it does certain things. Uh, you can either choose to bury it or raid, and you can bury it by putting it in here. The reason you want to bury treasure is because when you bury it, at the end of the game, it'll be worth the amount of points it has represented on the bottom of it. If you just have it leave it in this area, it'll be worth less points, though. Uh, so maybe I will simply... Oh, let's say I want to hold on to the sword here. Maybe I'll use it later. It will let me to roll these guys again. I just got a skull, so I have to put it in here. If I get three of them, though, remember, I'm going to have to suffer a penalty and give somebody a black mark. It'll tell you down here what the black spot does and how it functions. It's, you get scurvy. Uh, these things here, I cannot choose to re-roll because I placed a die here, but I have these two shovels. No, I don't want to use them. Let's go ahead and roll again. Uh, I got another skull. That's not good. That's not being useful. Put this in the hold area if I want. Um, or I can simply reroll it because I placed a skull there. I'll go and reroll it. A cannon, I don't need that either. Uh, now that's it. My last aspect of my turn, I can simply take any, uh, I can take a bonus turn by rerolling this die. However, if I roll it and it's a skull, it's going to make me suffer the black spot. So I'll probably choose to pass. Although if I wanted to, I could reroll this and also utilize these dies in the, die in the holding area, which could be very beneficial. But I'm not going to do that. I'll simply pass turn, allowing this player to go next. And then they would go ahead and roll their die and they could utilize certain things for instance uh the the i believe the sword here allows you to get put crew member down it's two crew per sword um, whenever you win battles, these things will move down and fighting is pretty interesting as well. So for instance, if I wanted to fight somebody out here, um, or maybe some, I, maybe I came over here to fight somebody over here, I could actually, uh, fight, I'd fight their total crew as well as they take one of these things at random, shuffle it up, flip it over. And let's say that it was a, oh, I don't know. It was a five. And then let's say I had a seven. I would tally that up and whoever has the highest points total is going to score and is going to win. And you'll get a certain, certain bonuses for winning combat as well as increasing your fame. I don't think you get anything for defending, however. Each captain also has their own unique abilities too. Some of them protect you from scurvy, other ones give you certain bonuses throughout the game. It tells you in the rulebook what they all are for. But that's the basic idea of the game. You're going around the board, uh, going to the sea, trying to collect these things here, and by the time all of these have been placed either in like your buried treasure spots or your galleon areas, um, the game is going to end. 
and then you're going to flip over all of your buried treasure and add it all up. Count two points for each of these guys here. You get bonus points for these. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game. There's all these different treasures. They all have different... Um, different values on them. Some of them are much better than others. And pl and choosing to bury them is going to be useful. However, if you do bury a treasure, somebody can uh, undig it up from you and steal your treasure. So you have to be very careful about that. And you can also be fought here in this area or fought at any of these places below. The uh, different weapons and all that tell you what you can utilize. But the main aspect of the game is obviously rolling these die. This is the combat die that is also included too during combat. You'll roll this and add that to your total. And so yeah, just a, a whoever has the most overall all uh, point value is going to win the specific combat throughout this game. You can fight in different areas. But yeah, rolling these things, having to place at least one skull down, you're able to then roll them over. You can also hold them. So it has an interesting new different element to most dice rolling games. But that's the basic idea of the game Dice of the Caribbean. All right, let's come up and talk about it and all the different actions and all that crazy stuff you can do in this game. So what do I think about the game Dice of the Caribbean? Well, first of all, the artwork on this game is awesome. I love the style of pirate games. I like that fantasy esque uh, like, I don't know, old-timey pirate feel. It does feel like a pirate game. You are moving your ship around. It. I thought it was going to feel very samey, like King of Tokyo and those other kind of games where you're just simply rolling dice and fighting against each other and scoring points and whatnot. It's not like that, really, which is interesting. And I think the reason why is because of the way you're rolling dice and how you're choosing to either hold them, lock them in, or exhaust them to move, or simply having to remove the, use the skull, first skull you get every roll and placing it in the exhaust area as well. It does make you want to be careful of how far you want to push it and whether or not you want to use that bonus turn you get at the end of your turn but most of the time i like to try and use it uh there is a ton of different abilities and actions i think it's wordy uh there's a, a full like thing going on here i was i wish it was kind of like an easier way to distinguish all the different actions and whatnot as opposed to having to go through and say oh, okay what's what does a three swords do compared to what is two shovels, the different two different shovels, or you get one storm, and then you have multiple bonus storms. You get bonuses for your black spots having more of those uh, skulls. You get one hat, and you get two hat, two cannons, and then you get bonus cannons. So there's a lot of, like, things you have to know what's going on. And it takes maybe one or two playthroughs to get all the different actions down to where you can remember without having to look at this thing here. Uh, I want to see the captains and whatnot have their own little abilities, uh, symbol symbology on here somewhere, so I know what their abilities are. You can look it up in the rulebook, which is fine but I think it'd just be nice to just have something stated right there on the card to make it quicker and easier to play. Uh, the way you increase your crew is fine. I like the fact that you can increase it on both your island as well as increasing it on your different barges or your galleons. Taking treasure back from the sea and bringing it to your island works well because you're burying it. So them thematically, it functions very well. Fighting is interesting because what you do is you're flipping over tiles, you're rolling die, and then you're simply adding up the total and whoever has the most is the winner. Uh, when you put your galleons uh, and into the basically turn them into treasure and put them on your island people can steal that though with two shovels and they can put it into their galleon area provided they have a ship on your island uh so you might be gotta be careful do you want to place fake treasure there at the beginning of the game so that people try and steal it and they get like three and four as opposed to like your sevens or if you want you can put all your best treasure there and hopefully nobody steals it because at the end of the game all those are going to be a lot more points than just simply having the galleons as points at the end of the game Fighting in combat's useful because you're going to gain that fame, reputation, and that's going to increase as you win combat, which is going to give you bonus points at the end of the game. And in fact, if you want to focus on combat, that could actually push you into victory enough that even bothering to do all the galleon stuff. So you can be more of a warring fighting tribe. You can also choose if you're not doing well. Like let's say you accidentally rolled three skulls. You can choose to suffer that consequence by giving everybody black marks. And that can be potentially dangerous to them, making them less useful. But at the same time, you're going to end your... You, you lose that on your turn. And uh, it, it costs you as well. So utilizing that might help. Certain captains are better for the scurvy than others. Uh, utilizing extra boats is going to help you as well because you can send them to islands and it feels like you're pushing a fleet on to fight the island. Uh, like I said, though, the artwork is excellent. The mechanics work out really well. Just a little few things, wordiness, a couple different character abilities that need to just be put on the board. Um, but overall, a fun game. A unique styled uh, dice rolling game that I haven't seen uh, implemented yet that's similar to the Yahtzee style re-roll -re rolling style games. So it breathes a nice, fresh take on a theme or a style of mechanic that I've played over and over again that seems uh, getting like it's getting samey. This one's actually interesting and different in that way because 
of how you utilize the dice. But anyway, I think you've uh, heard enough from me and seen how it's played enough to determine if it's something that'd be interesting for you. Overall, it's right there on the level for me. Enjoyable game. Would definitely play it again. Got to play it with some designers. Had a lot of fun with it. Up to you, though. Look up the description below on Kickstarter for Dice of the Caribbean if it's something you think would be interesting and backing for it yourself. Thanks for watching ye another unfiltered gamer board game review. This is Captain Fireball once again, appreciating you and your support and your patronage. If you'd like, please like, subscribe, and comment on this wonderful, wonderful champagne, this, 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 this wonderful page. And as well as, take a look at Bones of the Caribbean. If it's interesting, if you like rolling dice and sailing around the Caribbean, maybe that's, that, that's for you. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I personally never ever bothered rolling dice while I was on the Caribbean. And what I mainly did was I'd fight and bury treasure and kill people, but I guess it's kind of not okay to do that anymore, but it's up to you. Check it out on Kickstarter if you want. Also, unfilteredgamer.com. We have blog posts and other random crap that you can go ahead and check out if you'd like, as well as checking out our friends at everythingboardgamers.com and what's the other one? Uh, the Giveaway Geek. They give away things. Alright, well, back to plundering and looting with me. I'll see y'all in the next one.